So what's up Freedom Foods family and welcome back to the channel. Today we have a big day because yesterday what we did is we introduced a new f animal onto the farm. Completely new species, something that we haven't messed with on here yet. And this animal I would call very necessary to our pastures. So as we come here, I have them locked up right now. We're going to let them out, but first let's introduce you to them. So you guys can know what we're talking about now. What could it be? This animal that I did buy. I don't know why, but I still remember the Zubumafu song. I used to watch it right before I went to kindergarten. You know? Who could it be? That animal that I did see. Can you help me solve this mystery? Okay, I'm going to stop. <laughs> Ready? Let's see what it is. What's up, guys? Hey! Easy, it's okay. It's okay. And welcome to the farm and welcome to the YouTube channel. This is our, these are hair sheep. We got two, uh, these are brothers, they're two rams, because we're going to start our sheep flock. Well, they're the test run. And uh, if all goes well, we're going to start uh, our sheep flock here. This is actually really exciting because I've, I've wanted sheep for a while, but the main reason is the the guy that I got them from is my friend. Just these, these sheep came 3,000 feet away from my driveway. So you know they're extremely close. They're very adapted to this area. But when I went over to his uh, his house, we we're driving through the pastures, and I go, where's your Carolina horse nettle weed? Where's your dog fennel weed? Where's, uh, where's your ragweed? And he goes, I don't have any of that. And I go, what'd you do? What'd you do to get rid of it? He goes, I have sheep. They get rid of it for me. So that's what I hope these guys end up doing, helping improve our pastures big time and uh, starting another little enterprise for us here on the farm. You, now you might say, Ryan, you're in a pretty bad drought and you've been complaining about it for a while now. Yes, we are. Why in the world would you get another animal that eats grass? Well, one, because my neighbor has had big time coyote attacks on his uh, sheep flock, he's lost two lambs, and their actual their their mom actually got eaten last night, and uh, just nothing left of it. Really, really sad. So I went, you know what? I want to get into sheep. Let's save. Uh, let's make sure that they're around. Make sure they don't get attacked by coyotes. And um, so we took them a little bit earlier than we wanted to, but it should be fine. Now, what about the grass? Well, these guys right now, because they're our first sheep. They're very skittish. They're very skittish in me. They weren't handled too terribly much. Um, so they got to kind of warm up to humans. And that's why I got two right now. Once I get these guys settled and they follow me, you know, sheep follow when they trust you. And I can get them to trust me. That's what I've been working on these last two days. Um, then we can expand our flock and then we can get more. But I just need kind of a foundation to where I know what I'm doing. I know I learn sheep. They're a little bit different than cows. When you're sorting them, they're very different. You know, with, with cows, they'll just kind of mosey along and, okay, fine. You want you want me to get sorted? I'll give you a little bit of a fight, but I'll just move along. No problem. Sheep, on the other hand, they lose their minds. They completely lose their minds. They get scared. And one of them, actually, I felt like uh, I was a linebacker, you know, taking on a big-time running back because I get it in the corral that he had over there, and the sheep just took off, jumped off the side of the corral, hits me in the shoulder with its head, knocks me, not down, but back and kind of spun a little bit and runs out. I'm going, ooh, these guys, uh, you know, that's why they're called rams. They pack a punch. But I'm just trying to gentle these guys down. They're letting me get closer and closer little by little. Yesterday they were real scared. Today, they're a little bit better, huh guys? Not, no, okay, okay, easy, easy. Let's not freak out. Let's not freak out. They're just a little bit scared. So now let's go back to the grass situation. Why on earth am I buying a grass-eating animal? Well, I thought that I was going to get sheep, so I was kind of preparing for it, and I wanted a place to where I can kind of keep them in before I train them to the electric fence, before I move them out to pasture, just so we can settle them down. The corrals, I think they could probably get out of, because, you know, those are meant for cattle, and the spaces in between are pretty big. So I said, I have an idea, because I like, uh, I don't like to do unnecessary work, and uh, if, I, if I can get something else to do it for me, I will. This uh, little pen, if you want to call it, is actually connected to our backyard. 
And I said, and I thought I was going to get cheap and it seemed like it was going to be a little bit of expedited process. So I stopped mowing my backyard. That's why it kind of looks like this. And I said, okay, we need every blade of grass that we can get. So why not, because there's a chain link fence that goes all around it and it's pretty big. Why not train the sheep in here? I don't have to mow. It keeps them in. There's more than, a, more than enough grass here. Hey, it worked for me. And this is why we started with rams, because we don't need a bunch of them. We need really one, but uh, we got his brother that will probably, uh, will probably castrate and turn into a weather somewhat soon, but he needs a buddy to keep around. You know, sheep can't be by themselves. They will lose their minds. So we brought over his brother as a buddy. Now with sheep, you really do have to separate the males and the females out. Why? Everything that I've read, everything that the experts that I trust say, Greg Judy, you don't want them to have two um, two lamb births a year. You don't you don't want to have them give birth twice in a year. Why? That's kind of hard on them. And then the second set of lambs that come out, they'll be born in the winter time. And uh, winter lambing, everything that I've heard of, not very fun. You'll pr you'll probably end up losing half your lamb crop anyways. So we're gonna just breed them only in. Uh, we're gonna have them bred in December. That's why I said in the winter time, that's when we'll be looking at getting some ewes, some female sheep. If you turn on the rams on December 1st, then we're looking at May 1st babies. So that's kind of what we're gonna go by. Now, to keep these guys separated, they're probably gonna live the majority of their lives in the backyard, if this works out. And I'm just gonna get some panels, like some cattle panels, put them across, um, probably get four, six of them, and give them a section of, uh, the backyard for not going to move them every day but maybe every four or five days something like that that way we're not running multiple electric fences we don't have to build some sort of pen we have something that will keep them in something that works and something that i don't necessarily want to mow every few days we can turn uh you know kind of a waste in the backyard into uh, a gain with growing some sheep growing some lambs growing some meat so I think that's pretty cool. So that's how we're gonna feed these guys. We're gonna give them the backyard. Especially in this drought, as you can see out there, there ain't much left. And it's actually really, really concerning for our, our cattle herd. But these guys will have more than enough here. This is like, it, it, it's maybe about half an acre, the whole um, area with the, the house and the backyard. So they'll have more than enough grass to eat on. And then just maybe, because we're literally going to have livestock in our backyard. Maybe this can be incorporated into uh, our agricultural taxes instead of the regular living ones. That'd be pretty nice. Some of you guys might be asking, what breed are they? These here are Katahdin. They're full, I think, I'm pretty sure they're full or very close to being full Katahdin sheep. And I uh, went with them for a very specific reason. They're 3,000 feet away. I could have, I could have put a leash on them and walked them back. They're obviously very adapted to the area. My friend that uh, um, I got them from, he told me he hasn't wormed his sheep in I think three years, and they're doing, they're doing well. The rest of his sheep don't look wormy at all. They built up a, hopefully it seems like a little bit of a parasite resistance to uh, worms. The sheep and worms, they kind of go hand in hand, especially when they start eating down low. Um, and then with us moving them which will be every probably four or five days probably twice a week something like that um when we get that get that system going we shouldn't have really a problem with worms which would be to be great so you guys gonna be my lawn mowers yep look at that they're doing a pretty good job of it already and they, they seem pretty happy and they they weren't letting me get this close to them yesterday and i also have to introduce our uh livestock guardian dogs to them the ones that hang out back here and protect everything back here because we had a coyote just recently actually jump into our backyard and uh, it wasn't a good deal for him because our dogs tore him up like into six pieces. We got two half Pyrenees, half Anatolian Shepherds. Big, very big, very sweet, but can be very mean. Um, they're what's gonna protect these guys over here because we're not gonna put any kind of electric. We're just gonna let the dogs do the dog things. Now, which one of them are we gonna castrate and which one are we going to keep as the ram because we don't need to keep both of them as rams and if anything that might even cause a problem down the road 
Well, we're going to see, kind of give, it's an open competition right now. We do have one in the lead, and that's the one in the front there. Still scared of me. They're eating pokeberry. They're eating pokeberry. That's, that's very poisonous to humans. If we eat two of them, we die. One of them makes you very sick. Why are they eating the pokeberry? Unbelievable. That's why I like sheep. So he's in the lead to become the ram. Everything about him just screams good. He's uh, got a big old belly on him. Got better kind of confirmation. He's got a good set of low hangers there. And uh, he seems a little bit more gentle than his brother over there. He just, he just looks better. He's just a little bit more full, it looks like. And yes, they actually already have names, which I gave them yesterday. The one right there. The soon-to-be weather, probably. That guy's name's Lambo. It's funny. But his name right there... We're about to have some fun with this one. His name is Bob. Okay? Bob, Bob, Bob. Bob, Bob, the ram. Bob, 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 the ram. Bob, 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 the ram. Bob, 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 the ram. He's got me rocking and a rolling, rocking and a reeling. Bob, the ram, Bob, 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 the ram. Yeah, we're gonna have some fun. Now, I think that's super funny, and that's not the reason that we named him Bob. And it just so happened, I said, yeah, I'm gonna call him Bob. And Nicole goes, Bob, Bob, Bob. Bob, Bob the Ram. So she, so thank her for that one, or or criticize her for that one. That wasn't me. That wasn't my idea. I wish it was. It's fantastic, and I'm gonna be rolling with it forever. But that's actually not the reason that we named him Bob the Ram. See, my uncle, who was the closest thing that I had to a grandpa, he was a giant, 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 giant. I mean, giant. L.A. Rams fan. This was before they moved to St. Louis. This is before um, any of the, before they came back. Giant Rams fan. So I only found it fitting for us to get a Ram. We'd name it after my Uncle Bob. So there's Bob the Ram. And he has a fantastic theme song from now on as well. Bob, 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 Bob the Ram. Bob, Bob, okay, I'm, <laughs> now watch. I bet you you guys are gonna have that stuck in your head the rest of the day. So hopefully it's at night when you're watching this because you're going to be thinking, Bob, 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 Bob the Ram. Fantastic. I'm going to make shirts. Bob, 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 Bob the Ram. You can do... I can't tell you how excited I am about this. This is so much fun. I said if we ever get horses, the stalls that we would keep them, we got to call it the neighborhood. This is... Yeah, this is what I think about. Why? It's what makes me happy. And what makes me happy makes me smile. I like to smile. I like to laugh. Bob the Ram. Hey, where are you guys going? No. Got to gentle them down. They're, they've been, they know what alfalfa pellets are now. Now the job is to slowly gentle them down. You know, what I got to do now is I got to come up with a sheep call. You know, is it going to be come on sheep, sheep, come on? I don't know. We'll see. Give me an idea what you think will work to call the sheep when we move them. Because they're going to be just like the cows, especially the, the ewes. When we get those probably late Thanksgiving-ish, December-ish. Um, they're going to be out on pasture following the cows, hopefully moving right behind them. We're going to keep them with the llamas. Um, we have three llamas, probably put two of them in with, uh, with the sheep, give them pr some protection along with the electric netting that we have already. So we're pretty set up. We're pretty set up. That's why when my friend called and said, Hey, you know what? We're having attacks over here. You might want to come get these sheep that you eventually want if you want them. And I was like, all right. You know, we're not completely set up for it yet, but as close as we need to be, this system works for now. Now, just gotta get the dogs acquainted with them and let them do their jobs. Well, this will be a pretty fun adventure when they calm down, if they calm down, probably when they calm down. And uh, then, besides the goat weeds, I really won't have to mow my backyard. So to see how the sheep adventure turns out, hit that subscribe button down below, ring the notification bell so you get notified when we put up new videos. Hit the like button because it really does help with the YouTube algorithm. Drop a comment if you like, alright? Till next time, see ya. Bye. <laughs>